Hi, I'm Lorraine Serini, and today I'm going to make a red sauce, which we used to call a gravy. It's a very old recipe, got it from my mom, who was born in Sorrento, which is in the Campania region of Italy, close to Naples, and they make good red sauces there. So we're going to start with our meats. You always want to use some kind of pork. In this case, I'm using pork country ribs. Good pork makes a lot of flavor. Your meatballs always have to have three different components, veal, pork, and chopped meat. That's what gives it flavor. And then, of course, if you can find a good Italian store, you want to get some good sausage. And these are the mothers of all sausage. Look at them, they're beautiful. And we're gonna come over here, put a little bit of olive oil in our pot, and we're gonna start letting the pork cook while we do the rest. You wanna flavor all the portions of your meats as you cook them. So we're gonna put a little salt and pepper, and we're gonna turn them over. Oh, look at that color. Caramelization. Look at the bottom of that pot. That's where your flavor is going to start coming from for your big sauce. All right. And now we're going to roll our balls. My mother used to count the meatballs because as the sauce was cooking all day on Sunday, you'd start smelling it and it was so delicious. And you'd sneak down in the kitchen and you'd grab a meatball with the fork and uh, it tasted so good. Okay, so take four slices of white bread, cut the crust off, and you're doing this because you want your meatballs to be tender inside. And if you make them and you want them more tender, then the next time you add more bread. You put the bread in a bowl and you pour some milk over it, and that's going to go in your meatballs. So just leave that there to soak up the milk, okay? This is prosciutto, what it's doing here, I don't know, it doesn't belong here. Next, we're going to take our three meats. Kind of like the Holy Trinity, the Father, Son, the Holy Ghost. You put your meat in there, and now we're going to start adding our flavor. Of course, we're going to put some garlic in there. And a little smash, get the skin off. And I'm going to chop them up in my little $12 chopper, Kmart. You could also do your onion. So you're going to cut up your onion and throw it in there and let it all chop fine. You don't want to be eating meatballs and get a big chunk of garlic or a big chunk of onion. That's just not nice. And there you go. Gonna put that in there. And that's gonna get mixed in real nice with the meat. Little bit of pepper, little bit of salt, little bit of dried basil. Can't use fresh in here, you gotta be dry. Italian oregano. Lots of parsley, gives it lots of flavor. Now in the old days they thought that eating parsley gave you abortions, it was a lie. Now we need our cheeses. So we're gonna grate our lugatelli in there. I like a lot of cheese, as does Roberto. And most kids do too. Now, believe it or not, you need some flavored breadcrumbs. And now we can put our bread, which is all mushad. That's what makes them tender. Now we're going to put a little bit of eggy in. Now this is the part I really don't like, but there is no other way to do this. I've tried mix masters and all. You gotta use your hands. And you start smushing it together because you want everything to get flavored, you want the meats to mix up together. It's going to be all one color and then you know you got it. And that is your meatball mix. One little trick, if you want to see if your meatball is going to be good, just make a little patty, throw it in the pan, let it cook and taste it. I feel like Ina Garten when they show her washing her hands like it's something only she can do. And now we're going to roll our balls. Now, my mother said, this is the important part, because when you roll them, you're making them nice and tight so they're not going to break apart when they go in the pan. And there you go. Don't make giant meatballs because they don't cook good. Don't make little ones because they look like gravy train. Yeah, you could use an ice cream scoop, but I think that's sacrilegious. This is the way to make a meatball. See this? This is a big piece of the cheese. It's like a little surprise in that one. This is where I'd like to have Frank Sinatra singing in the background. Because when Frankie's singing, he's singing to you. And I pretend I'm making meatballs for Frank, that he's coming over for dinner. 
The biggest mistake cooks make, they think that everything Italians make are full of garlic, and it's not true. So you remember that. Start light. Next time you can add more of whatever you like. You know, Robert, this is the part I remember the most. My mother rolling the meatballs. And I remember her teaching me. Keep rolling, keep rolling. Use the palms of your hands. Roll around and around. And it's funny, after they're dead and gone, the things you remember. You never know at that time that that's gonna be a lifelong memory. But I can see her hands doing this. My mother went out to work, so she would leave the things partially done, like she'd bread the pork chops or whatever, and then she'd leave me little notes. Put this on first, put a little oil in the pan, put the heat on low, and I would just follow her instructions. And voila, I made a dinner. And I think that if you want to see if your kids are interested in cooking, that's the way to do it. Okay, I have to go back to my sauce. Now you got the flavor of your pork ribs, you're getting the flavor of the sausage, and then we get the flavor of the meatballs. Again, the Holy Trinity. One, two, three. Mm, can you smell them? Mm, mm, mm. Let's move this guy in here. Okay, we got too much grease there. So we're gonna empty some of that grease out. You don't want that grease in your sauce, so you just get rid of that. But all of this brown on the bottom is all your flavor. So what you're gonna do is take some nice water and let that cook and all that brown will come up. And boy, is that gonna add flavor to your sauce. So you see, you get all those nice brown bits up. You're gonna put your tomato sauce in, bring it to a boil before you put your spices in. Let me tell you something. Follow me. Over here, over here, over here. Every Italian American cook uses Del Monte. Del Monte is the sauce. All my aunts, all my girlfriends, everybody. And put a nice tomato sauce on our shirts and in the pot. Del Monte. So I put the fresh basil in, and now we're gonna put our herbs in before we put our meat back in. So we put a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, oregano, give that a nice gentle stir. Now you have to be nice to your sauce. All your flavor is gonna be in the sides of the pan, so every now and then you gotta give it a good stir and get the sides of the pan. And then we put our heavy meats back in and we put our bowls in. Get them under the gravy. Now we partially cover it. Don't cover it completely. And we just let it simmer for all day, a couple of hours. You just taste it now and then. You give it a gentle stir. Get the sides where all the sauce gets kind of concentrated because that's all the good stuff. Give it a nice little gentle stir. And every now and then check it. You should get just a few bubbles. And that's how it stays. And that's gravy. All the Italian American mothers made their gravies like this. Thank you.